The finale of Black Cake Season 1 begins with a scene showing Covey's birth. Matilda delivered her in a field with only Pearl by her side. Matilda gave her the title of godmother and Pearl swore to look after Covey when she wasn't around. In another flashback, we see Covey preparing her last black cake. Her cancer has gotten worse and she knows she doesn't have long left. Byron volunteers to help. Covey watches him prepare the batter with loving eyes. But she soon takes over when Byron doesn't do it properly. She leaves the recipe as her heritage and advises Byron to sustain the tradition through his children. Why does Bunny refuse to come to the funeral? We jump into the present where the trio, Byron, Benny, and Matilda, cut the cake open, which was kept in the freezer by Covey. Inside, they find a jar with a picture of Covey, Gibbs, and Bunny. When Benny googles Bunny's formal name, Etta Pringle, she discovers that Bunny is a famous swimmer. She kept her promise to Covey and broke all female swimming records. Byron finds a recording for Bunny in the jar, too. The siblings travel to San Diego, where they meet Bunny at a book signing event. However, Etta isn't receptive. She isn't keen to dive back into the past and talk about Covey's wedding night. Etta also rejects their invitation to attend Covey's funeral. Benny encourages Byron to tell the truth about Eleanor's life as Covey in the eulogy. The world ought to know who the real Covenina was. But Byron is skeptical. He gets an even bigger shock when Lynette shows up and tells him that she is pregnant. Byron expresses optimism for their future together. Why does Byron leave the funeral before it begins? However, Lynette expresses her ambiguity over whether or not she wants to marry Byron. Mabel and Benny sit in the last row since it is an open casket event. Mabel tells her how she wasn't allowed to attend Paolo's service by his parents. In a surprise move, Byron leaves before Mitch takes to the stage. He expresses his inability to keep lying about everything. Etta shows up as it is starting, after listening to the recording, and follows Byron to the beach. She mentions a Caribbean tradition of celebrating the person after their death on the ninth day. Etta explains that Jamaican beliefs dictate a person's evil shadow might linger on forever if not gone by the ninth night. The Singling and Etta decide to hold a memorial dinner in the traditional style for Covey. Etta recalls how Covey was the only one in the entire parish who supported her and made her comfortable. Benny expresses her happiness at sharing the moment with everyone. She laments how everyone will go back to their jobs and lives after the funeral. But the others console her that they'll always be there for her. BNB encourages Mabel to tell Gio the truth about his father not making the same mistake that Covey did. Benny opens up about her own evil shadow, Steve. Byron is thrown off when she mentions Steve visited her, leading to a fight. Ed stops them and tells them that they need to release their shadows as well to move on. She then narrates what happened on the wedding night. She explains that she went to Gibbs two weeks before the wedding to make a plan to stop it. It was Pearl who came up with the plan to mix the poisonous fruit, shown in the opening scene of the finale, with the wine that Little Man drank. Ending explained, who killed Little Man? It was also a part of the plan. Pearl warned Bunny against telling Covey any part of the plan. After helping her escape the island, the plan was to send Covey to London with a fake identity and a place to stay. Her job was to get Covey out of the wedding suite. Bunny knew that Gibbs would come, and perhaps with a better plan. But the waiting got to her, and she decided to follow Pearl's plan by poisoning Little Man's drink. The quartet decides to go back to Covey's casket and place a special item that connects them to her on Covey's body. How does Black Cake end? Who is Mabel's father? The episode ends with some closure. Benny is inspired to go back to her creative instincts. Byron decides to pursue legal action against the Institute. Mitch will be fighting his case. Mabel listens to Covey's recording once again to figure out who her biological father is. Covey says that Mabel's father is an integral part of the food critic's life story. However, 
Before we can hear, Mabel stops the recording and looks up with a short gasp. The credits start rolling. So, we don't get closure on all accounts. If Covey's abusive boss isn't Mabel's father, who is? We are left wondering about the question. Since this is the last episode of the series, we will have to wait for season two. The episode review. The finale of Black Cake remains true to how the story was told in the rest of the series. Going through its motions, Episode 8 is crafted as if it is in awe of its protagonist. Bunny's character remained on the sidelines for most parts of the series, which is ironic given how Covey's arc transitioned similarly to Bunny's by the end. I think even though the writers had the right intention and ingredients to close out the story, the execution overall leaves a lot to be desired. Right from the start, they have invited us into Covey's life. And through her, others around her. However, I always felt at a distance from the real conceit. The flurry of surprises kept distorting what the truth was, as the creators do with Mabel's unanswered question. Lynette's betrayal, Byron's walking away from the funeral, and Mitch's absence from the dinner table are some of the negatives from this episode. That did not feel right in the scheme of things. Black Cake's end is not a happy one, or even satisfying, but it is authentic and remains faithful to the source material.